Hi, I'm Aaron of Living Science Videos. Think about all the mutants you've seen in movies, be they superheroes, villains, or even monsters. Like the most famous of the comic books to use mutations as an explanation of superpowers, the X-Men. Before the Silver Age of comic books, many superpowers were explained by aliens like Superman and the Green Lantern, or they sprung from legends like Aquaman. But many of the X-Men were born with a mutation in their fictional X-Gene. This mutation is so powerful that comic book mutants are classified as the new subspecies Homo sapiens superior. Now take Wolverine, for example. The spontaneous mutation in his fictional X gene changed his immunity system and greatly sped up his ability for his RNA to create the proteins necessary to replace even missing limbs. But what about Spider-Man, who wasn't born with superpowers or the latent ability for these powers to emerge later, like so many of the X-Men? His super abilities were induced by a mutagen to his already existing cells, a radioactive spider bite that somehow mutated every cell in his body simultaneously. In some versions of the story, he can even secrete the proteins keratin and collagen into a spider web like a, a real spider. In reality, with very few exceptions, mutations don't normally give an organism superpowers. One of the closest examples in real life to a mutation giving superpowers is a mutation of the LRP5 gene called sclerosteosis. This mutation changes a growth inhibiting protein in bones so that these mutants have highly dense skeletons. Now, doctors have identified an actual family living in Connecticut with sclerosteosis whose condition is being studied for a possible cure to osteoporosis. That's the opposite condition of low bone density. Sufferers of osteoporosis have bones that break easily, whereas bone fractures are unknown in this family with hyperdense bones. With any variation of the normal genetics, there can be adverse side effects. Real-world mutations can be beneficial or deleterious, or both, but are usually neutral, giving neither benefit nor harmful effect. Scientists noticed that this one family with unbreakable bones had none of the adverse symptoms associated with sclerosteosis. They just have a solid benefit with no downside. There's also a myostatin mutation where, if you inherit a double copy, one from each parent, you'll have twice the muscle mass with half the fat. And this mutation never seems to have a negative side effect at all. Imagine if you had both of these mutations. Super muscular with unbreakable bones? These are very rare dramatic mutations, however. The vast majority of mutations have effects that are either very slight or barely noticeable. Although no human being can really be said to have a mutation for superpowers, some mutagens can help an organism to survive and thus mutated genes are passed on helping the population to thrive. Uh, whereas harmful mutations can quickly eliminate an organism from the gene pool. In reality, every single human being is a mutant. Every human has several dozen mutations right from the point of conception, and we build up more over time. The changes in DNA that are inherited are combined and compiled with the mutations of your ancestors. And this is how genetics can be used to trace your ancestry. And this is also why some family groups may have slightly different traits than some others. If Wolverine's mutations were real, they would have occurred in his germ cells before he was born and could be inherited by his offspring. But that type of mutation is not realistic. Mutations to germ cells are often caused by what are called spontaneous mutations because they're random. They're caused by copying errors during the process of protein synthesis. If RNA makes a copying error in that process, then that portion of your DNA will produce the wrong proteins resulting in a change in physical or chemical proportions somewhere. A real-life example of spontaneous mutation is larger brain size in humans relative to our body mass. This is known as encephalization. Chimpanzees are our closest evolutionary cousins, and their brains are about one-third the size of ours, despite having a similar body mass. And scientists have identified a couple mutations related to this, one being in an SRGAP2 gene, which is present in both chimpanzees and humans. Humans have not one, but three duplications of this gene, and each of the copies have their own mutations. The changes this made to our brains that enabled larger brain growth is not yet fully understood, but we know that it wasn't just one mutation, rather a concert of different ones, and geneticists have identified some of them. Unlike spontaneous mutations, the source of induced mutations is outside the cell. They're the result of mutagens like radiation that damage cell structures. 
Unlike the fictional Spider-Man, these types of mutations seldom have beneficial effects. But there are a few exceptions in scientific literature, like an experiment with radiation's effect on barley that increased mildew resistance in the plant. Many induced mutations are deleterious or harmful. For example, the mutagens called nitrosamines that are found in cigarettes. Mutagens that cause cancer are called carcinogens. However, like the barley example, not all mutagens cause cancer. Cancer is the uncontrolled growth of cells that harm other parts of the body. And cancers are often named for the part of the body they affect. And furthermore, not all cancers are induced mutagens from outside the cell. The overwhelming majority of cancers can be avoided by lifestyle changes, like avoiding carcinogens in cigarette smoke. However, for the remaining estimated 5 to 20 percent, they are caused by random, spontaneous, and inheritable mutations inside the cell. An example of this is breast cancer, which can be caused by inheriting a defective BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene. These genes are implicated in DNA repair. So as you can see, mutations can go wrong. Induced mutations are caused by damage from mutagens. So fictional induced mutations like Spider-Man or the Hulk and gamma radiation or even Godzilla with nuclear radiation are more likely to result in damage like radiation sickness or cancer. Of course, mutations don't always go wrong. They're the reason humans have bigger brains, for example. Not necessarily a superpower, maybe, but not too shabby either. It's definitely a good thing. Mm -hmm.